it is very easy to put a seed in the ground. But for the seed to rise up, to become mature, and then to produce fruit, before a fruit can produce from a tree, the branch itself must be independent. The branch must be mature, enough to control and then bear fruit. And that's what we want each and every one of us to do. We're going to look at a new subject which boils down to the new birth. Say the new birth. The new birth. The new birth. When we talk about birth, all of us here that hear the sound of my voice means that we were giving birth and then we started to grow and now most of us too have started giving birth which means that it is very important. So when you become a believer, we want to look at this simple topic, but it will take us a while because I will not rush into it. That will take our time to learn and then any other questions that we ask, the ministers will help you and then we look into the scripture to get deeper meaning from it. Father, we thank you once again for opening us up for your word, let this word bring understanding, illumination, and Lord God, concentrate into our spirit, perfect everything that we will talk tonight, because this is not a man's word, this is the author of the word yourself, you imprint into your scripture to give us understanding in Jesus, then let the house say amen. We shall look at the very short scripture from John chapter 3. I hope those at the back can read from here. John chapter 3, and then throughout. When we get to the 5, verses 6 and 7, it goes. I'll take them gradually. John chapter 3. When you are there, let's read from the verse 5 upwards. John chapter 3, verse 5. It's a question somebody asked. And I believe if we were in the time of Christ, we would do the same thing, we asking such question. John chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Mm -hmm. Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born of God. Amen. Thank you so much. Who went to Jesus? There was a man, a teacher of the law, one of the Pharisees, very astute man, very powerful in the midst of the council. His name was called Nicodemus. Yeah. Then Nicodemus has even won a space in the British English, in the dictionary. Why? Because they said this guy went to him Nicodemusly, <laughs> which means that he secretly or he hid himself. He didn't want people to know the mission, the purpose of his visit to the master. Okay, so the name of that man is called Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a teacher of the law, very astute and powerful man, who knows all the laws of Moses. But there was one thing that was hindering him. Now, when you are a teacher, for instance, and for you to advance in your course, or your curriculum, or your career, it means that you must learn from the best. So this teacher who had already known the precepts, the precepts, the intercepts of Moses' law, this guy came to Jesus seeking an advancement to know the things of heaven. Because for you to accumulate and have an understanding in the things of heaven, it takes a man who came down from heaven to give you understanding. John the Baptist, when so many questions were coming to me, he said, me, I am from the earth. So every man who is from the earth is earthy. But he that comes from above is above all. So this guy also realized that I must advance my knowledge by going to the master and ask of him. Now, when he went to Jesus, he posed a question. That how can I be, or how do I know the mysteries which are hidden in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus told him that for you to be accepted, by my father, then you have to be born again. Hallelujah. How can somebody like you and I, we have been given birth already, 
and now we are all about to depart. We have finished our testing years, we have finished our achieving years, and now we are setting up our faces so that we meet our Father in eternity. But now you have to be born again, else your Father will not welcome you. All right, so this question is why I want us to look at the new birth. There are two kinds of birth. There is the natural birth. Paul said that he that is born of the spirit can be led by the spirit. There is a natural body and there is celestial body. So people that are born onto the prince of this earth, they must first of all pass the test, which is the natural birth. But for you to gain insight and grow, become so spiritual, become so advanced, and be so stout in the spirit, you must be born spiritually. So there is a natural birth, and then there is the spiritual birth. All right, before a man can be born again, number one, you must know the purpose why Jesus wanted you to be born again. Why is it that you are already born, you, are, you have grown, but you need to be born again? Which means that there is a particular reason and there is a particular purpose that you must match up to it. You must rise up to full or fulfill that part that God is required of you. So first of all, we are going to look at the purpose of man and why he has to be born again. Shall we go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27? Genesis chapter 1, the book of beginnings. Take from the first one, 26 and then 27. And God said, Let us make man in our own image. Uh huh. And after our likeness. And after our likeness. Take your time for me. You will proceed. I want us to, when you read the Bible, you don't run as if you are reading textbook. Most of us do the same thing. When we carry the book, we are reading a storybook. No, no, no. God said, Let us make man in our own image. After our own likeness, who was God speaking to? This one has become a little bit of debate. Some people say God was talking to the angels, but there must be a clarity. Angels are not in the same class with God. So if God wants to make a species, a being, he will not consult man. He will not consult an angel. Why? Because Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 downwards, we saw that God began to create. But in his creation, angels are created beings. He made angels, he created them with fire and wind. So he can't consult something he has already created and then ask him that let us also create another species. The reason why you must have clarity in this, so that you know your purpose in the presence of God. And you know how valuable God values you. Because if you fail to understand why God even made you, it will become difficult to understand the next scriptures that we want to look at as our new birth. And God said, let us make man in our own image. Here is plural. Don't forget, when you look at the Hebrew word, it's Yahweh. Yahweh means a tetragrammal name. Tetragrammal means it is plural. Plural. That's where we got the Trinity from. Because anytime God wants to do something, he doesn't say, I am. God loves plurality. He involves himself in three dimensions. Because when you read Colossians 1, it tells you that Jesus Christ created the heaven and the earth. When you read Genesis chapter 1, it says God created the heaven and the earth. And it's also the Spirit of God created the heaven and the earth. So the Spirit of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they created. And these three are one. Amen. When we say they are one, you begin to know the father by what he does as a father. As I stand here, if I don't have children, you can't call me father. But when I give birth, when I begin something, then I take the position as a father. God was known as a father when he chose Abraham. And then he made Abraham to become a nation. So if you want to live a nation, they knew him as a father. Why? Because he wanted to be a father to a particular nation. Follow me closely. 
So God consulted himself. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And you see these demarcations according to their operations. The way he operates makes us know that he is three in one. Amen. All right. Because the next person that he wanted to make, that one has never been made before. He had made the moon. He had made the sun. He has called the light. He has created fishes to fly upon the sea. He has called everything to come. He just called them. God did not use his hand to do anything. Bible said that as he called them, they came into being. But when he got to man, he didn't call man. He wanted to make somebody who is exactly like himself. Somebody who can also stand in the place of God. Somebody who will be a deputy. Deputy means that when the president is not there, he is in charge. So even in the absence of the president, the deputy has to function exactly as the president will do. Amen. All right. So God said, let us make man in our own image, after our own likeness. When we talk of man, the first man that God created is the spirit man. The spirit man. So Bible called him Ish. Ish means spirit. It's a man, but it's a spirit man. So first of all, you must know that you, you are spirit. For you to see me, it is not your flesh that sees me. It is not your soul that sees me. It is the spirit who hears me, who sees me, who is able to animate this body. So that is what God created. So he created this man as a perfect being. When he created man, man was a spirit. He was not just flesh. Okay. Because when you come to Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, that is why he made a body so that this man can live inside of the body. When he made this man, this man didn't need any new birth because he was having the same stature as God. He talks like God. He reasons like God. He has supernatural knowledge. He has supernatural insights. He has wisdom and understanding that God put inside of him. Because when we talk about the spirit of God or creating one in his image, most people even ask, when we talk about the image, what does the image mean? Is, it, is the image like a shadow which falls on the ground? What does the image simply mean? Let's quickly look into the scriptures one more time. Because if you fail to understand you, your spiritual nature, then your physical will be disadvantaged. But I'm trusting God that at the end of this, you shall not be advantaged in the name of Jesus. I don't need the amen. Because if you know your identity, then you can take dominion. Why? He made you for dominion. But if you fail to understand this, you can't mandate. You can't dominate where he has given to you as your place of appointment. All right. So he said, let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air over every creeping thing that walks upon the face of the earth that is the mandate he made somebody like himself the spirit man and gave him a command and the command was just one and one only to dominate and to replenish, to dominate and to replenish. Today we will not go deeper into it. Because if you say replenish, replenish means refill. When you are operating supermarket business, when your stock is maybe dilapidating or your stock is becoming empty, you must replenish. And replenish means fulfill or bring in place of what was there and then it was lost. Because Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, there is something we call a gap theory. A gap theory. God made the heaven and earth, but two, there was chaos. So people that read deeper into the word, 
They begin to say that what happened was if God created some things, He created everything to be perfection. So, what created the chaos in number two? That is millions of years. Genesis chapter one and Genesis chapter two is not just a story. Something happened there. But that's not what we are looking tonight. Amen. Okay. So we were created for two things and two things only. Number one, he created you in his own image after his likeness to have dominion. 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 Dominion means that having rulership in a particular space, having leadership or rulership in a particular space, it comes from the word domain. Domain means a king sector or a king place or a, a, a set of place demarcated for you. So if God has given you the mandate over everything he has created, then it means you are to be as a king and then a queen. That is the whole purpose of God creating us. So this is why God made us. To have authority like himself, to rule in the earth, to operate and speak. When you speak, it's supposed to happen. When you command, it's supposed to come to pass. But do we see this in our fallen state? That is why we need the new birth. Because if we don't connect ourselves back to the originality, then we will be running the race but still will be lacking. We will run the race no matter how fast you run. Why? But the race is not to the strict. Neither the battle is going to be given to the strong. But it is time and chance God gives to you and I. But people that begin to ascertain their originality, God is able to connect back to destiny. And I see God giving you that aspect in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So why did God create us in his image and his likeness? What do we mean by God's image? When we say he created you to be his image, why did he say that? Number one, we say God made us in his image that is in respect to his intelligence. Say intelligence. intelligence. When we say intelligence, intelligence, your ability to use your mind, your spiritual faculties, to interpret between what is good and what is bad, to ascertain when something is rising or falling, without being told whether this is blue, yellow, green, white, black, or white, you will easily know it. Why? Because he has given that to you. When he created the animals, animals, they have spiritual anatomy as human beings, but they don't have intelligence. They can't make fire. They can't cook their food. They can't do a whole lot of stuff. But you, there is something peculiar with you that nobody tells you when you are hungry. You go to your kitchen, you prepare your food. Am I right? Even if there is no kitchen, you are able to keep your life because of what? An intelligence God gave to you. So when we say, in what respect was man created after the image of God? Number one, it is in respect to his intelligence. God has the supreme mind. When we say he has the supreme mind, his mind supersedes every one of us. His mind supersedes that of angels. Angels are more intelligent than human beings in their fallen state. But God has a supreme mind, which means he's able to tap into any mind. And he has the most form of intelligence. Amen. So the God's kind of intelligence is what we call infinite intelligence. And then man was gifted with mind and intelligence. So the aspect when you say you look like God, one of his image is that he has given you a mind and then an intelligence. Now because of that, man is able to have capability of thought. He is able to think. Because before you do anything, you think about it. Thought will change your life. If you will give minutes in thinking about your life, you see the very things that are not going well in your life. If you will give yourself time to think only, not doing anything, if you can think about your life, your life will be transformed for good. Amen. Amen. You know that thinking is a science, 
And thinking is an art. The art of thinking. The science of thinking. Because people change their lives by here. The way they think. America is different to any other nation because of the way they think. They are far different than Russia. They are far different from Europeans. They are far different from Africa. The way Africa thinks is different from the way Americans think. So thinking can change the thought pattern. When your thought patterns are changed, your life too reflects what has already been changed here. So God gave us an intelligence so that we will have a mind and to think. When you become a believer, you build on what God has given to you and he's able to open your spiritual mind. The physical mind is in the head, but the spiritual mind is in the heart. Because with your head, you will think, you will plan, but it will not come to pass. But when God put it inside of your heart, it means it is settled. The enemy controls man from the mind, which is the head. But God controls you as a believer from the heart. The control seat of every believer is in the heart. But the control seat of unbelievers is in their head. That is why when they see, when they think, they do and they fail. But God do not want you to see with this physical eye. Because your, your spiritual eye must control your physical. So when it is forgiven here, it becomes perfect. You just don't see with this one, you just don't think from here, but you think from the heart. May the Lord open the heart of your heart, the eyes of your heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, in what respect is a man created after the image of God? In respect to his moral nature. When we talk about moral nature, that is in righteousness and in holiness. You know that everybody has got some kind of benevolence, like kindness in the person. Somebody will not go to church, but the bowels are full of affection. They've not been to church before, but they're able to do good deeds. When they see some people that need, that need something, they come to their state, they can give them money, they can buy clothes to them, but they are not believers. They are not Christians, but they have that kind of moral character. They say, oh, this one needs this. Let me help him out. They are able to do good because of the moral nature that God plays inside of them. So they have righteousness and holiness. They also have benevolent disposition. That is their way of showing an affection unto others. Now, another moral nature of God is that God is always happy. Always happy. And then he puts something in our life that we have to be happy and also become prayerful. Because it is a moral character of a believer to pray. You have lost your original state, and for you to gain it, you must be in constant prayer. To attain to this new birth, when Adam was in the garden, Adam didn't pray. Why? Because he was in the highest realm. He was not in the fallen state. He hears the voice of God. He sees God in the cool of the day. He communicates with God. He didn't need an intercessor. He didn't need a middle person. He didn't need anybody to stand in between to receive the prayer and then channel it to God. Why? Because there was an open heaven when he was in the garden. When a believer is born again, you gain that originality. But until Jesus comes, you will not assume the final perfection unless he comes. So we want to connect ourselves as he leads us so that we look at all this interpretation and then we connect back to him and the spirit of God will just overflow our life from one stage into the other. Now, another aspect that we respect God in his image is that in respect to his dominion. Say dominion. dominion. And I explained that dominion means the domain. God didn't make all of us the same. When we talk about your domain, your domain is your area of gifting, your speciality. What he has given to you, nobody can do exactly as you do. Nobody can behave exactly as you do. There are some people, there was one guy who was amputated when he was a child. But he developed himself 
that in the para Olympic game, you become number one. That one can just ride a bicycle more than an able person. Very powerful. He advanced himself and has become so special in that gifting. When you tell Brother Jack to ride a bicycle, he will, not, he will be the last person. But this one who has no two legs, that one is able to ride powerfully and he comes number one. So God has given to each and every one of us a very unique gifting. Our area of specialty, yours is different from mine. That is why I should not be jealous of you. Because God wants you to shine in your own specialty. Amen. Amen. But when you go to the world, you see that people compete. They compete because they want to be like somebody else. You must be yourself. When you know your identity, you advance yourself. You thank God for your area of gifting. That is why you are queen. That is why you are king. Somebody knows how to speak very well. That is her area. Somebody knows how to sing. That is her area. Somebody knows how to play football. When you bring book and paper or vi viral, he can't write anything. When you ask him, tell me about yourself, he can't even speak. But bring a football. Everything will be interpreted by the food. Hallelujah. Amen. So you are ruling in your gifting. That is what God has given to you. In Africa, all our curriculum is not helping us. Because they give us book knowledge without practicalities. So somebody who pass out from school, he knows everything. But when you bring creativity, it becomes a problem. Even when you leave them to rule themselves, it becomes a problem. Because they study only the theoretical aspect. That is not their specialty. That is not their area of gifting. If they had connected to God and asked God, where is my area of gifting? The Lord will make them kings and queens according to Revelation chapter 1 verse 6. He said, he has made us kings and queens so that we can represent God and worship him. We are all kings. The children of God, everybody is a king. Because he made you in his own image after his own likeness. If you want to be a queen, say, I will be king in the name of Jesus. God bless that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, in respect to his domi dominion, God also has a material realm. The world that we live in, he is also here. Heaven is his throne. Earth is his footstool. David said, the highest heaven, God is for God, but the earth belongs to man. Because we are gods in the earth. So as he reigns from above and below, he expects every believer, every man, ish, the spirit man, to rule here. When lion sees you, you are the king. When elephant sees you, you are the king. But now when they see you, you rather run away. Why? Because you have lost that Nature. Let a tiger come here, everybody will run away. But the fear God placed inside of you, every nature must bow to you. Why? Because they have seen their king, they have seen their queen, and they must mellow. But when you see even a cat, I know somebody, even cockroach, when he sees cockroaches, he's going to run away. And then mouse, may the Lord deliver you from those fear in the name of Jesus. Yeah. All right, another aspect that we say we are like God is his immortality. Say immortality. Immortality. How about 10 minutes? Immortality. God created man not to die. The first man he made, the purpose was to live eternally, perpetual. Why? Because spirits do not die. So as he is, God is a spirit, according to John 4 24. So he created the first man. To be like spirit without getting sick, because spirit will not get sick. What are you going to inject a spirit to make him fall sick? Spirits do not get tired. So when you become you, be, you, be, you, you are a Christian and you like sleeping too much, know that somebody is beating you in the spirit. Because they don't get tired, they don't get weary. They are not afraid of anything. That's how God made man. The first man he made was a spirit man and spirits should not forsake spirit should not get tired spirit there is nothing you can do to kill a spirit when you get to africa people kill spirits yeah that's for the first time i saw some we kill you in the name of jesus you can't kill a spirit you see for lack of knowledge my people perish but you can make them worry 
You can make them worry. You can make them sad and they will run away from you. When the enemy comes to you and then he sees that you don't mind him but you are more powerful than him. And your power is not from you but it's from him who has called you. Jesus who has saved you. You are hidden in the heart of God. There is a, re a revelation that was given about three, three, four weeks. This is how it was. Somebody was carried into heaven and the Lord placed him in a place which is very soft and warm. Very soft and warm. And it looks like blood. And he was inside that place with Jesus. And he asked him, the Lord, what, where have you brought me? He said, have you written, have you seen in the scripture that you are in me, John chapter 17, and I am in God. So where we are standing now is the heart of God. Jesus carried the pastor, stood in the heart of God, feeling the warmth, the, the nice atmosphere. How do you read the heart of God? So we are in Jesus, and Jesus is in God. So the devil has no access to penetrate the heart of God to the us. So when the enemy comes to you to make you sad, he will rather be sad himself and leave you. Why? Because your thought pattern is changed. You are thinking about abundant life. You are thinking about your life not being safe. Your business being healthy. Everything going on well. Even though you are walking through fire. But the fire is purging you. The fire is not killing you. Fire for a believer doesn't kill a believer. And we don't run through it. Because when you run through fire, you will not be purified. So your purification, even in your suffering, it is God who is burning away the chaff. He's burning away the papers. He's burning away the sticks. So that the pure gold can manifest himself. So you are being found in the heart of Christ. You must see yourself as that. Why? When you know that, then you know that your new birth, being born again, has a spiritual significance. And there are three types I will take us through. I just want us to finish the image and the likeness of God. And when we have time, we proceed from there. So we are like God in his image. We said number one, in his intelligence, in his moral nature, and then in his dominion. The fourth one is his immortality. We will not die. When you come to Christ, Jesus said that those that believe in me, they pass from death unto life. Don't forget, 1 Corinthians 50 also tells us that we shall not all die. In the twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ shall rise first. So people that do not know Christ, they will not rise. So the first resurrection, they will not resurrect because they don't have Christ. So the dead in Christ will rise first. And we who are alive, who are not dead, we will all change. And then we meet our Lord, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16, in the clouds. When the voice of the great archangel sounds, the trumpet sounds, the dead rises first, then we who are believers, like you and I sitting here, then we all change in the children of our life. Then we begin to meet our Lord in the air. And then we will descend to come and fight for Armageddon, the last battalion. We fight here, we purify the earth. Because for we to succeed with this new death, for we to live here again, the earth has to be purified. The earth has been baptized in the time of Noah. The earth has been sanctified by the blood of Jesus. But it needs to be purified, which we call the baptism of fire. That is why God will destroy this earth. Because he has to destroy every unrighteousness. And after he has destroyed it, then the new heaven, the new Jerusalem, Revelation 21, it will descend like a bride, a dawn for, his, for her husband. It will descend from the clouds, it comes upon the face of the earth, and then we come there to live forever and ever. We are not going to live in heaven. People that want to die now, you can die, go and wait for us. But after everything, you were not made to live in heaven. You were made to live in the earth. So the new earth is where your new birth, your body, after you have been saved, you have been saved, the first saved, you have been saved. Now you are in the process of being saved. But when Jesus comes, that's when you get your finality. So please, that's why we admonish believers to come to church. Because you are working for your salvation. Not the salvation of justification. 
Because that was Jesus has done it already. You just accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That is your first salvation. But you must continue to be taught the things we are teaching. To groom you. To make you mature. So that when he comes, after the earth is destroyed, or unrighteousness condemned, then you will live forever and ever. You don't need Lamborghini to, to, to go anywhere. In the new heaven and earth, you know how angels travel. Just like this man begins to play keyboard. One single song can take you to Ghana. One call can take you to America and come back here. In the spirit, we don't drive, we don't ride. You move with sounds. Hallelujah. When Paul had the opportunity to go to the third heaven, even the songs he had, the mute is not said, don't tell anybody yet. Because when you begin to sing those songs, those songs are for, for the Lamb. Those songs are the ones that carry your spirit. Those songs will take you places. You don't need any, any, anything in the new earth. Everything will be done. Amen. Amen. May the Lord help our spirit in the name of Jesus. As I bring you close out about five minutes, I will let you ask your questions. This is just introduction of the new. I have not gone anywhere. But this is just the prelims we have, we have done it. All right. We are also like God. One of his nature, then we pray, is that in respect to his creatorship, God is able to create the things that people, even in their fallen state, thank God that we have scientists. Why? Because the nature of God, one of his events, is that he's able to create. So even if man, in his fallen state, still possess the ability to create, ability to make new things to help life, ability to create cars, airplanes, and even they say that in our mind, we have not even used 5% of all the ability that man can develop. Man in his fallen state, doing this, then what if he was given the 100%? So the 100% was his spirit state. Adam, nobody gave him the name of any animal. The Lord brought all the animals to him and said, what will you call them? So he saw the one with the beard and said, you, your beard is like somebody lying, so lion. You see, he gave names unto these. <laughs> he saw an elephant, gave them names. Everything that he said, Bible said that, and they were so. Yes. Hallelujah. And that same principle has led us. That's why when you didn't give birth, you are able to do what? Give them names. So that creatorship is part of God's nature that he gave unto man. So man can design new patterns. Man can induce new combinations. For the doctors, there is one doctor in China he was able to develop twins with uh, just a single cell. And then he created identical twins from it. This is knowledge. Why? Because God has given that creativity in man. So when you are able to do that, it should not take you away from God. Because that is even your fallen state. The attribute, the attitude, the nature of himself. Even when you fell, because he made you like himself. You are able to do all those things. But when our people get to know this, they say, there is no God. But Proverbs 14 will tell that it is only the foolish that says in his heart that there is no God. Because the things he has made, even declare that there is a creator behind. Nobody will just create this, make the, the snow come this way. Heat will come, warmth will come, coldness will come. There is a designer. How does the sun even rise? And when the sun rises, he does not vacate his place. But he rather rotates the earth so that the, the, everybody enjoys a part of the prince called sun. But he has placed sun up above, he doesn't move. He is stationary, but he has to revolve the earth so that everybody on earth will enjoy parts of light. Hallelujah. So when God gives us this ability to know, our intelligence should not draw us away from God. That our creativity, our moral aspect, the things that we are able to think about, and what aspect that the enemy is playing as a being close in the way we think, he is able to tap into our mind, feed us with so many things. And when God does not come in, he is able to steal from our life. 
but it will be far away from us in Jesus' name. And we will here, Amen. I will give you two minutes to ask your questions, and then we will just rest today. We are looking at new births. A question somebody asks has took us into Genesis. And then when the Lord comes next time, we will just proceed from there. I want to take questions. Please ask me questions just regarding what we are learning. Or if you have any questions about new births, you can ask of it. Questions introduces a whole lot of yes, Papa. Please, I want to know how it to be born again. How do I stay in that way? How to be born again? How do I stay in that way? How to be born again? This is a very good question. How to be born again? Somebody asked, must I enter the second time into my mother's womb? I never, I never thought old men can ask, in quote, some stupid question. <laughs> Have you ever seen somebody going back to be born again? Yeah. So how can somebody be born again? When you read Acts chapter 1, with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believing with your heart that God raised him from the dead. If you do these two things, you are saved. Confessing with your mouth, you confess the Lord Jesus, and then you believe that God sent him and that he raised him from the dead. When you do that, you are saved. But repentance must be the first nature. Repentance means turn about. If you are having this microphone or this camera, Repentance means let your back rather face it. So if I love cheating people, my back must be given to the people. If I love stealing, my back should face the stealing. If I love beating people up without any cause, my back should face. That means repentance. So you don't face, you don't embrace it, but you give it your back, which means you are not going back anymore. And people that like going back, but they are not able to leave their goal. Forward should be your focus. Forward ever. Backwards never. Amen. Another question. So for, uh, how do you stay in that domain? Repenting. Being born again. How do you stay in that atmosphere? That's how do you stay in that area? So that you don't go back. Okay, before we answer him, when you give birth, sweetie, when you give birth to this wonderful boy, didn't you feed him? Or did you give him water? Tell me. Did you give him water? What other food did you feed him? Everything nice, that will make him grow nicely with the mind, everything. So when you are born again, you know, somebody can be 80 years, but when you're born again, you are just like a day old baby. Physically, you are 100 years, but spiritually, you are a baby. When this guy is 12 years, like Jesus, he was speaking with the doctors of the law and was teaching them very many things they did not even really understand. So, when you become born again, you must feed on spiritual food. Why? Because it is the spirit in question here, the ish, this spirit man. The spirit man is there, but he does nothing with you. He is not reading the word. He is not praying. Uh, he, he is not singing an uh, exciting song. He is not praising God. So you are famishing him. So when you become born again, that spirit has to be renewed by feeding him, by praying, by believing God and trusting him. For me, you wanted to add something. My next question will come from this side, so prepare. Uh -huh. yeah. I wanted to say this, you know, for instance, uh, as a woman, um, yeah, let me use myself as an example. I want to push me. Okay. So there's some certain things that I won't eat. Okay. Because I know when I eat, I'm gaining. I'm gaining. I'm gaining. It's the same as that. If you want to gain, you have to eat well. Okay. So if you have become a believer, and you want to stay in it. As a believer, you have to read your Bible. Okay. You have to communicate. You have to communicate. You have to 
spend time mm. with the person that has made you to become a new person. But who is that person? That's your creator. Mm. So if you really want to, like Christian, you sometimes see somebody singing, somebody professor, I wish I had this gift. You are not doing what what you're supposed to do to get that gift. Like when we were talking, we said that uh, God made us queens and kings mm. to take over. Mm. So if you really want to be a queen and a king, you have to get into that season, that domain, that place. Not to cast you. Get it. Thank you so much, Mom. You know what? When you go to Bethlehem Palace, all the boys that they, uh, the, the little princes, there is a way they train them. The way they must even walk, the way they must talk. So, a hundred years will be serving that boy, but that boy will command him, but he is speaking from authority. So, when you are born again, we teach you right out to as to how you, 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 you will live to expectation. Because when you are born, you must be taught so that when you grow, you assume your original function, functions and responsibilities. So, that's what mommy is saying. All these things are taught, you are being trained. So that you don't feed on milk. But there's a time you feed on milk, and when your teeth comes, you don't need milk again. Oh. Somebody who was sick, he doesn't want to rise up. Bring any fufu, he will eat. We are not feeding you with that food. Because when you are growing, your teeth is, is stronger. I have to give you bones. I will not, even when you put uh, soft food, tea, he will throw away. <laughs> Hurry, he will kick away. But he's still on the floor. So that boy is not a baby. So how about tell him to rise up? Uh -huh. So people, there, there are studies in that. Time for milk and time for meat. Okay. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I want to know if they are three working together or is one person working in a three dimension or acts in a three dimension. Okay. Very clear. So we go to First John chapter five. First John chapter five. Put it, somebody can read for us. First John chapter five. Seven for me. Five or seven is fine. First John five, verse number seven. To your vision and come back. Yeah, that's the technique in getting there. Five. There's seven. For there are three. The Father, the Word, and the Holy This one, I'm, I'm there to teach it in the future, but because you are saying it. Uh huh. For there are three that bear witness. Uh huh. He said, there are three that bear witness in the heaven. So in the heaven, we have who? The Father, the Son, and what? And the Holy Ghost. Go to the eighth part. Okay, and then, and these three are one. Go to the number eight. And there are three that bear witness in the earth. And when you come upon the face of the earth, there are three that are also bearing witness. Who are they? Yes, this is a few chapter I will teach. I don't want to be, I'm just watching your appetite. You see, I started first that, uh, for, for example, I am a pastor here. When I have a wife and I give birth, I will have sons and daughters. So my sons and daughters will call me daddy or father. Does that disqualify me from being a pastor? No. So I am a pastor to people that know me to be a pastor. If I have my own company as well, when I am sitting as a boss, the people I employ, who would they call me? Are they going to call me pastor? They will call me their boss. So I can be several things, but I am the same person. God can be anything. In Exodus 15, 26, He is the God that He let be. So when you are sick, your doctor is now. The God, who is your father, is now your healer. It doesn't change you from being your father. 
That's why I said he is three but one. The three gives us his offices, his way of operations, his way that he revealed himself. This same subject has even brought partitions in religion. Some say that we have what we call Unitarian. Unitarianism, they say God is one. So Jesus is the same thing. Because God, the body of God is Jesus. But God himself is a spirit. God does not have a material body. But the body of God is what we call Theophany. Theophany means the, the way he manifests himself. Moses said, I want to see. He said, and no man in the flesh can see me and live. But if you insist, I will cover you with my, the back of my palm. And you will see my back. But even that's what he put in. Why? But the glory was too much. So he made him see him through Theophany. At that time, he had not come upon the face of the earth. And you must not see his body. Why? Because the body has been prepared until the perfect time. And the perfect time was the time that Caesar Augustus was ruling the whole earth. Why? Because Caesar was ruling just as God is ruling. That is a kingdom rule. And God wants the earth to be like the kingdom of heaven. So he can't come in the days of uh, those warriors, those Akita people. He can't come that time. He must come in a day where everybody has a sense of kingdomship. That's why the Bible said, in the fullness of time, God sent his son to be born of a woman, to live in the face of the earth. Philippians 2 says that he despised his nature to be God. And he condescended into the nature of a man, humbled himself, a king, a ruler, all by himself, just to be born like you and I. So he bypassed the sin. Everybody that comes upon the face of the earth is called sinner. When a man and a woman meet to produce you, you are sinner. But Jesus, God bypassed that sinful nature. That's why he came. He put the gem inside of the woman straight away. This is also a mystery. And God permits you to learn. In the garden, what's really happened? Because there is a way God wanted us to produce, not by what happened there, but that is for advanced, advanced courses. Because if God bypassed the natural means, not relying on the arm of flesh, he put the gem there without any man. So he can give you a child without a man. And I've seen it multiple times. People that were trusting God for the future, he gave them children. Yeah, he gave them children. One woman was having fiber, but she started buying baby, baby bottles and buying food, awaiting the baby. Meanwhile, they, want, they have to cut away the fiber. She con converted the fiber by faith into a fine boy. And in that much time, she delivered. Hallelujah. God can do anything. He is a miracle worker. That makes him superb. He does what will baffle your mind. So if you need a baby, forget about what people say. Become the second man in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. He can do anything that he wants. Okay. I'll take about two more. This role, I've not heard your voice yet. I want to add something to what Okay, that's good. Yeah. father. They knew him as a father, but they wanted to see his face. 
In Exodus, he brought one of his two families. The people were wondering what is. We want to talk to this God you speak to. Are you the only one? We want to hear him. You know what? What's well, no problem? Let them sanctify themselves and wait under the mountain. I will make them see me. When the Lord began to quit, and the wind started, heat started, fire, a sword appeared like fire in the air. Say, hey, hey, please, please, Moses, tell God, only you, only you speak to God. And come and tell us. The people that wanted to see him, they even saw a, just a wind and a fire and began to run away. So, we took this. That's This whole training thing, uh, even theologians, they don't understand. And that's how God wants it. God, if you understand God, He ceases to be God. But you can know Him in His operations. Because one thing, every title that God uses, Jesus uses that. Every name that God uses, that same name is Jesus. And when you go to Revelation, Jesus claimed all of that. That's what I'm saying that in their operation. Because on the earth, God has to come, you see? Yeah, this is something even theologians. Let's read a last scripture, Colossians chapter 1. There's a scripture which is burning in my heart now. I want to go to Jeremiah 3 15 first, but we see this. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. For in him, he will, he's talking about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Once all, all the all the food of Godhead. Body. Body. Yeah. yeah. He's talking about Jesus. In Colossians, Jesus combines all that you know. Because when the children of Israel, all they knew about God is the fatherhood of God. And when we say father, father is not a name. Put this in your mind. Nobody is called father. What is your name? So my name is father. Father is a title, and God is not a title. So the way he operated to the children of Israel, he became a father to them. Even in Ezekiel, he was so furious with the pastors and the priests because they were not teaching them what he wanted them to teach. So he said, I shall become the shepherd. You know, I'm the good shepherd. I shall become the shepherd and take care of my sheep. That's why he came. So the title, God is a title. Father is a title. Son is not a name. So if you are son, sonship in Hebrew means beginning of something. Because Adam lost a kingdom. So God has to come bodily. And then he leads you to how you live like God. Because on the earth, you must be like God. You are God's. That's what he told them, the Pharisee. Have you not read that you are God's? And they couldn't arrest him because it was written. No, we'll say that, but don't worry. I've gone through, I've gone through the same thing before. Yeah.
You see, whatever the Bible says is correct. Because the Bible talks about fatherhood of God, it talks about the sonship of God, it talks about the Holy Spirit and His operation. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. When I am here right now, I am trapped. I can't be two Jesus at the same time. That is why he left the face of the earth. So that he would distribute his spirit. He can be everywhere at the same time. We will learn about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not an it. It is not a force. It's a personality. It's the person of Christ. Because he wants to be everywhere. That's why he left. If he was still living in Jerusalem, nobody would have been saved. Because the gospel would have been trapped by that place only. But he ascending, he distributed himself, giving you gifts. That's Corinthians 13. That's why I said we will eat. Because that some food are milk, some food are juicy, some are meat, some are bones. Uh -huh. So we'll go gradually. And then when we get there, we get there. Amen. Amen. Alright, our time, we have about five minutes. Let's do three minutes more. Let, let, me, let me add last one. Okay. You see, the main thing that Paul said it. No, we must be mature. Paul said, when he went to the Corinthian church, he said, I had wanted to speak to you as mature people. And I couldn't because you were still a baby. And that's why he could not do more. Because some things there. When the Lord took even him to heaven, when he came back, because he didn't want to create pride and proudness, he said, I am not as a man, but he was himself. He had been to the third heavens, he has been, you know nobody taught Paul. Jesus himself taught him. The, the disciples had three or four years. It's like uh, approximately four year degree training that they had with Christ. But Paul did not have that privilege. So Jesus had to meet him the way of Damascus. And he told him that for this reason I am showing myself to you. And I shall appear to you and teach you everything. So Paul will speak with the experience received from God himself. That is why sometimes he can even put to Peter face what that what you are doing is wrong. Why? Because it is Jesus that commanded him that. And what is better to get a revelation from Jesus than from what is being taught. And when you read the word, Jesus wants to have a personal relationship with every believer. And he wants every believer, not a pastor, so every common believer, he wants everybody to grow. He wants to speak to you. He wants to appear in your dreams. He wants to direct you. Why? Because he has saved you. And I believe he will take us there. Later by later, we will get there. So we feel later on, then we bring, these things are bones. Because when you you hold here, somebody is telling from here. And all of them are true. But if the spirit will not give you revelation, you will not understand. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ. So, 
knowing the Father, like praying to the Father, just as somebody was saying. Usually, when you go with the word, it makes it perfect than just seeing the Father. Did somebody gets me? Jesus Christ told Peter, come. And he was able to walk on the water because of the camp, not because of Jesus. So the devil does not fear Jesus, but he feared the command of Jesus. That was why he was able to go to Jesus and tempt him. Right there, he saw him, he went there. But when he said, away from me, he went. So Jesus can be here, the enemy will be here. You will be at church, the enemy will come upon you. So we shouldn't be deceived, but we fear the command of God. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you so much, Pastor. Our time is far gone. But as I said, it's best, I, love, I love your story. There was, um, there was a city called Berea. Paul went there once. And then the Bible said that after he left the place, the people picked up their scripture and they made sure that everything that this guy said is there. So when you develop that culture and trust, so that people will not deceive you. Paul said that some people, because the main uh, tool of the enemy is deception. Some, some people will use the same Bible that will deceive you. It is written, but the interpretation will be wrong. And the spirit behind every interpretation, the enemy has anointed his own prophets as well. And the prophet, false prophets are like it. They are winning people every now and then. So it will be very difficult if you are not guided by the Spirit of God to know the faith ones. So please, it's better than when opportunity like this comes. You also, it's free. It's free. Maybe by March, June, thereabout. There is a, something we are doing, School of Ministry. Everything is there. The topics are there. Lessons are just gain insight and knowledge. It's, it's active now, but we've not launched it. But everything that the materials are there. It's a school of ministry prepared by mommy and dad just to advance you and I. We grow, mature into the place. Everything, theology, uh, the if you want to know how to pray, even how to preach, everything is there. Just download, study. Download, study. And God will help all of us. Amen. Amen. Shall we bow down here for another prayer? I want you to make one prayer. I know our time is fast spent, but you are asking the Spirit of the Lord to help you. The few things you have heard here. Bible said that he is the author of the word. And because he gave it through inspiration, ask that may the Spirit inspire you. God is able to teach you when you are sleeping. Because when you are not sleeping, you become disturbed. So he said, Lord, as I sleep tonight, expound my understanding, open my mind. And then teach me again, especially the first principles of the word, that I will know my birth, this new birth, as I've come to Christ, who will reveal my eye, open my eye, to know you more, that I will not be found wanting, should you come any moment. Let that be your prayer. Let that be your prayer. Let that be your prayer. God bless you so much. Father, we thank you for the word. We bless it, O oh God. Let it rise up in us as a seed which has been planted in a good land and let it mature into 30, 60, and 100 in Jesus' name. Shall we say amen? amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God. Let's take our offering and we can. Our service will be incomplete. If we don't.